Okay, so the first question is this is a starter question that we ask everybody. Um, tell me about the emergence or development of your feminist identity, how that <laughs> came about for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know it's a very, it's a very broad question. Something more psychological. <laughs> feminist identity. Okay, well, I can, and it doesn't have all that much to do with psychology, although I wish I could, could, could say that it does, but um, actually, the first feminist psychologist that I ever actually there are two, three actually, that I ran into before I really knew anything about feminism, but I read their work and it wasn't until a little bit later that I put two and two together when I had also learned something about, about feminism. The first was uh, Letta S. Hollingworth, uh, yeah. some, I see some of you nodding. Um, she was just this brilliant woman who studied uh, gender and gender roles in all kinds of contexts, among other things. and. It's kind of forgotten. I happened to read some of her pieces as an undergraduate in a, in a readings collection. I thought it was just brilliant. The piece that I read that made a huge impression on me before, I, as I said, I even got into this field, was something, it's called something like Sleta S. Hollingworth, published in the 30s, I believe, and I think it was something like social forces that lead to gender segregation among the feeble-minded or something like yes. that, yeah. it's something mm -hmm. of that sort. And the whole idea was that social roles made a difference as to, out, it, there were far more men than women in institutions for uh, the, hand, well, specifically for the retarded at that mm -hmm. time, residential institutions, talking about the 1930s. And um, she was guessing that that was because, this was her hypothesis, and she proved it pretty well with an awful lot of data and very little statistics at that time. Uh, means and correlations were all she had. Mm -hmm. um, that, uh, in fact, it was roles that made the difference for a lot of people. That women of low IQ were able to sort of blend into society mm -hmm. in ways as as nursemaids, as scullery maids, as whatever menial kinds of things, but domestic kinds of activities or married. Okay that men didn't have options of, that they met was much more pressure on men to be working out in the world, and that was much harder for, quote, feeble-minded, unquote, individuals to do. So the men ended up being complete failures, and the women just kind of blended in. And that was her hypothesis, and she showed it mm -hmm. with all kinds of data about who was where and where these people came from and what the ratios were in different institutions, and she just documented this thing. Now, of course, we know now that, and I think she certainly suspected that some of the, the of the sex ratio for the among the retarded had to do with genetic kinds of things because you know there, there's that issue of, of uh, uh, two X chromosomes versus one X chromosome and that, that that makes a difference and we know that you know men outnumber women in a lot of these real deficiency genetic syndromes but when it comes to the sort of mild to moderate mental retardation where there's no clear genetic link I think her hypothesis still holds mm -hmm. Um, and so I think she, I thought she was absolutely brilliant when I wrote this read this paper and I had never I never heard of her before or after I looked her up not too long ago and she also published on the gifted and that's the work that's yeah. much better known yeah. uh, but this particular piece on gender just made such an impact on me as oh so that's how roles and societal social roles can influence something so important as you know whether you get called feeble labeled feeble minded and institutionalized or not. And that, that just made a huge impact on me. So I was you know, like a junior in college or something when I read that. And, uh, so that really did have a great impact. About the same time I read Eleanor Maccabee's, uh, psycho what was the first book called? Um, psychology, uh, of psychology of Sex Differences. Sex differences. Yeah, psychology yeah. of Sex Differences. And uh, that made a big impression on me too. I read all the chapters and, and stuff. And I never thought I would work in that area because the conclusion I came to was that reading that book was that yeah, there are lots of sex differences in almost anything you can mention, but they're small and they're, you know, small mean differences with huge standard deviations and lots of overlap. And besides, they're probably all genetic. So why should anybody care about that stuff? So that was maybe 1966 when I read that. So anyway, so I wasn't terribly in. I read it. I was interested in reading it, but I came away with saying, well, I don't know why anybody would want to study that. They must be obsessional or something. Um,